Hello, Dinky Danny here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I got a pretty big lot of games and it came with two NES systems. And this one here is missing this front door that you normally have to open to put a cartridge in. And the second thing is whenever I turned it on, this red light here kept blinking. And on my television it was just blinking a gray screen. So what I'm going to do is open this up and clean off the 72 pin connector and hopefully it'll fix it up. So that's, I'm just going to show you guys what I do. Um, I already unscrewed all of the screws off of this, but on the bottom here, you can see it has, it's going to have six screw holes, one on each corner and then two in the middle. So you pretty much you just unscrew those and then once you do, you can lift the top off and there's a metal protector right here and pretty much you just have to unscrew these screws I think there were six or eight of them and there's a couple you'll see them they're just holding in all the all the metal connections so once you unscrew those that just lifts right off really easily and then once you look inside here you have the tray which goes up and down so whenever you put a cartridge in and then push it down it locks and it locks it into place so there are also screws on this and normally they're on each of the corners there are six of them there's one here one over on this side and then up at the top there are two on each of the two corners here so you have to unscrew all six of those and this one takes a little bit a little bit more work to get out you kinda have to pull it forward and then up so it doesn't pull straight out but it's not very difficult to get out either so now that we're looking inside you can see the circuit board here and back here's the you know power and where the RF switch would go in and then your RCA cables and pretty much you have to unscrew six more screws here there's two over on this side and then I think I think there are two or three over here so but once you get that unscrewed you could just lift that right out of the bottom and be careful whenever you're doing this be careful to watch these wires down on the right right here because they stay connected so you don't want to pull it too hard or anything like that because those wires could come loose and the next thing I'd, I'd like to go over whenever I'm cleaning these out I pretty much just use you know q-tips and I don't put any liquid on them or anything like that no alcohol but I mean I guess you could if you want but normally I just go through and I'll just clean up all the leads and make sure they're like this one had a ton of you know spider webs and stuff like that so and maybe it was just dust but uh, q-tips work really well once you're inside and if you're gonna clean the outside typically I just use um, these things right here Oops, Clorox wipes and uh, pretty much I like them because they're not rough at all so they w you don't have to worry about scratching any of your systems and they're they're moist so whenever you use them they they clean things up really well and things that are kinda hard to scrub off seem to come off really easily with these so check these out and uh, I don't really use them inside the system because they are wet so I don't, I don't really use them on the inside but on the outside they work really well so here this black thing on the circuit board is the 72 pin connector and what you do is pretty much this is this is pretty tough on there I'll try and do it with one hand it's a little bit of a pain but this usually gets stuck on there pretty well and you just kinda have to wiggle it off and then once you get it off it looks like this so down here on the bottom is there's a row that connects to the circuit board and that connects all the pins and then the top one is the pins that are going to connect to the cartridge whenever you put them in so and then on the back they connect so pretty much what I do is I just use a really fine sandpaper and pretty much I mean I even got just got this stuff uh, sandblaster but um, pretty much you want to get the kind I don't know if you can see it on here but it says um, you want to get fine and just feel it it won't feel very rough at all and you don't want something too rough because it'll rub the metal off of the leads so pretty much you can just stick that inside of there and then rub it on these pins 
and you don't do it too much I already did it on this one but uh, you don't do it too much and it'll get rid of all that oxidation and stuff like that that has accumulated on these pins and then also the, you want to clean the pins back here which is where that 72 pin connector will be connecting to the circuit board so and I just used sandpaper on that too I know Luke Morse did a video on this and he used steel wool but um, either one really works you'll see once you start scraping it um, that it'll be dirty in certain spots and then you can kind of see there I did a little tiny portion and you can see that it's clearer right there but um, that's pretty much all you have to do uh, you scrub off those pins and then just put it back together the way you took it apart and hopefully it'll work so I'm Dinky Dana and I hope you enjoyed this video hopefully everyone can get their NES working without that blinking light and blinking screen alright thanks for watching